Now that you're familiar with some of the problems to look for during water wall inspection, let's discuss how you find them. We'll go over some inspection procedures and why they're needed. Boiler inspection actually starts before you enter the boiler. Listening for leaks, for example, is part of that pre-entry inspection. Most of the inspection, though, takes place after the boiler has cooled down and you can get inside. Once inside the boiler, you can determine the exact location of leaks identified during your pre-entry inspection. You might be wondering how you can get close enough to the boiler components to inspect them. After all, a good-sized boiler may have water wall 150 feet tall. Then it's difficult to see the kind of details we've been discussing if you're looking up at them from the bottom. Well, there are two ways of coping with this distance, movable and fixed scaffolding. A movable scaffold, like a spider, can be used for looking over most of the water wall. Fixed scaffolding can be erected inside the furnace to reach areas that need to be inspected. You probably won't use fixed scaffolding unless extensive work must be done on the water wall. Scaffolding can be hung from the furnace roof or built up from the bottom of the furnace. Fixed scaffolding provides a stable work platform, but it takes a long time to build. You can also inspect the water walls from the bottom of the furnace and through the inspection doors. It's easy and quick, but it's not very thorough. Using a spider is more thorough, while fixed scaffolding gives access to a larger area. Whatever method is used, the best possible lighting should be rigged in the boiler in order to improve your visibility. When you begin the inspection process, there are several tools that you should have with you. An inspection mirror, a small hammer, a scribe tool or knife, a wire brush, and a flashlight. An inspection mirror will be useful when you look at the water wall through the inspection doors. Use it when inspecting places in the water wall that are not easily accessible. Now a scribe tool or knife is used to scrape away ash buildup and scale to expose the bare metal. A wire brush can also scrape away ash and scale. A flashlight is needed because the boiler's normal lighting may not be adequate. One inspection procedure that may require a special tool is detecting tube thinning. Now, sometimes tube thinning can be determined simply by looking at or touching the tubes. You might feel a gouge or depression. Some thinning, though, is harder to detect and can only be determined by an ultrasonic measuring device. Now, an ultrasonic measuring device uses a high-frequency sound beam to measure the actual thickness of the tube. The measurement can then be compared to the minimum allowable wall thickness to determine if repairs are necessary. Accurate ultrasonic uh, measurement requires a clean metal surface. Preparation often includes sandblasting the metal surface to ensure accuracy. Ultrasonic measuring is one kind of non-destructive testing, or NDT. It's an excellent method for tube measurement, but it's not the only one. A sample cut from a tube is another way to measure thinning, but that's destructive. So the preferred method is to use ultrasonic measuring. While tools like the ultrasonic measuring device are helpful, the most important ones are your eyes, ears, hands. Look for problems. Listen for running water that indicates leaks. Feel a tube's surface to determine its condition. Sometimes you'll feel things that your eyes have missed. Remember that safety is important during all phases of fireside inspection. Different inspection methods inside the boiler require different safety measures, yet there are standard safety procedures you should always follow no matter what you're doing. Make sure there's adequate ventilation in the boiler. One way of doing this is to set up a fan in the inspection door like this. Also, make sure that no harmful gases are present. Clinkers and accumulations of ash should be removed from the boiler walls. You don't want them to fall on you while you're inside the furnace. Besides standard safety gear like a hard hat and safety shoes, additional equipment including eye protection, gloves, protective outer clothing, 
and ear protection might also be necessary. Special precautions are needed when you are above the boiler floor. For example, using a spider calls for additional safety precautions because you're working at great heights. Before the spider is installed in the furnace, check its cables and hoses. Make sure they're in top condition. When you're ready to go up, have all your tools with you. These should be tied to you or to the spider. You don't want them falling on someone below. Wear a safety harness with safety lines attached. Also, check how much weight the spider can carry to ensure against overloading. Watch for chafing of the spider cable. And don't forget to read through your plant's safety manual and comply with all of its requirements. Fixed scaffolding also requires special safety precautions. If you use scaffolding, make sure it complies with your plant's safety manual. Again, don't overload it and secure all tools. Whether you're using a spider or scaffolding, if you find an unusual condition or a failure, you should photograph it. Photographs make your description of the problem easier to understand, and they serve as a permanent visual record of what went wrong. Well, we've now covered general tube thickness and soot blower problems, visual inspection techniques, and ones that use measuring devices, and the importance of safety precautions. So take a few minutes now to clear up any problems or questions you might have.